Alright everybody, and welcome back to King's Quest V by Sierra, and the volume is rebelling once again, because it does that. It is first thing in the morning here, and I'm still slurping down my coffee, but I do it for you. So when last we left off, we had went to this island and were attacked by harpies who really liked our harp playing, because wordplay, and now we're on Mordax Island, which looks like the most evil place you could possibly imagine. Except maybe Mordor, but that's aside the point. Cedric, how you doing? Ooh, I hate to say this, Graham, but uh, I don't like this place at all. I know what you mean, Cedric. Quit being a pussy. We got work to do. Alright, well, we're going to take care to avoid the incredibly deadly fall off the stairs, and uh, we will, uh, I guess we can explore this island. What else are we going to do? Too late to turn back now. Ooh, I don't like this place. It's creepy! Thank you, Cedric. You don't like anything. There's some little dragon statues here. Two monstrous statues of grotesque, distorted serpents, serpents. face each other across the narrow trail leading to Mordak's castle. Oh, that's cool. How are you guys doing? The stone statues don't respond. Well, that's nice. Well, good day. <laughs> Too bad. It looks like the eyes have it. That wasn't even a good pun, man. Come on, you can try harder than that. Okay, well, that won't work. So much for just walking on through. You know, I like to do things that- <laughs> Shut up, Cedric. No one likes you. You're worse than Higgins. So, I like to do things the easy way and just walk on through, but it won't let me do that. Will my old favorite, the hammer, work? That won't help with the stone serpents. Sure. I mean, I guess taking these apart with a with a cobbler's hammer would take quite a while. So, what can we do? We got shot with those eye beams there. Maybe we could reflect the eye beams back at the the things. That that would totally work. Let's give it a shot. Ha! Not so powerful now, all you stone serpents. Good day. Come, Cedric. Well, it looks like there's no way in. Let's turn back. Come on, Cedric. Even Graham's getting annoyed. Even Graham's getting tired of his shit. All right, let me save, y'all. Huh? Okay. Well, uh, got this gate here. The strange castle. So close now, intimidates Graham as it towers threateningly before him. Well, I guess we can just... Don't gotta tell me anything about the gate, I guess we can just go over to it. No, Graham, don't! Ah! Uh -oh. Okay, that that's a pit. See, it looks like this is just a stone step leading up to this little platform here, and you could manipulate this really cool-looking portcullis. But no, there's actually a pit right here. I don't think it actually tells you that. Well, we're not getting in that way. Let's see what's around here. See? <laughs> Get in! Let's go back now. No, I'll figure this out. Cedric, exactly what the fuck do you think we're going to do? In case you haven't noticed, the boat is shipwrecked, and I don't fly very well. Anyway, we have this grate over here. Graham notices a rusted grate embedded into a stone platform next to Mordak's castle. And have this really cool looking background, I just want to say. Point that out. The twisted and deformed shapes of the island's rocks seem to grow up out of the very earth like strange weeds. I see. Well, we can't manipulate that. It's cool that it looks, but how about this grate? Graham tugs hard on the grate, but soon finds it's rusted in place and can't be budged. That is unfortunate. Will my hammer fix it? That won't help budge the grate. I disagree. A hammer fixes everything. What about this uh, iron pry bar here? Ah, see, that worked. Two minutes of work, Cedric. Two minutes of work. And you said it couldn't be done. The open grate in the stone platform invites Graham's entry. I don't know if I'd say it invites. It's the only way in that we know of. I guess we gotta go down there into the darkness. Ooh, you are crazy to go down into that dark oh, hole. Oh, for fuck's sake, Cedric. You don't know what's down there. 
Well, do you have any better ideas? No, uh, mind if I wait for you here? No, that's a good idea, Cedric. You be the lookout out here. But uh, yes, who will be the lookout? You can hand your father his tools. Uh, even I like how even the game designers know that Cedric is getting annoying by this point in the game. Okay, so now, as you can see here, we're in the third and final maze in King's Quest V. And this one is, to use the game's own words, this one's a doozy. Okay, because, okay, let me show you here. If I go down, right, I, fucking Graham's possessed by the devil for a second. As you can see, he's now facing away from the camera. And if I go back up, same thing, he's now facing away from the camera. Because this maze changes to your perspective, so whichever direction he goes in, if I go over here, I'm facing away from the camera, it's his perspective. And I'm slightly confused already, but I think we need to go this way. I'm not even gonna lie here, I'm using a map for this place, because fuck this place, okay? I'm not trying to wander around here, there's absolutely nothing to see in here. This is the most notable feature in the dungeon except for the places we need to go. Uh, everything else is just plain gray walls. There's not even any decorations on them. It's just bland, right? And confusing. It's a way to pad out the length of the game. That's why there's no less than three mazes in this game. Anyway, so I believe we go this way first. And then I think we'll go this way. And this way. As far as we can go this way. And then up. Graham. You're not cooperating with me, Graham. And this is a corner, which makes it even more confusing. I think we need to go here, and then we're going to go up until we reach a wall. And if I'm correct, we should see something in this room. There we go. Well, you don't see that every day. A huge beast, sporting a fluffy topknot, bound in a crude hairpin on top of his head, skulks in one dark corner of the labyrinth. I see. You don't look, uh... Well, you don't look friendly, but you don't look uh, like you're wanting to kill us either. Which makes you kind of exceptional as far as things we've encountered in this game goes. Sure. Uh... Yeah, how you Graham doing? Graham should watch his step around this ugly beast. I think I can handle myself. How you doing? Shouldn't play around with Dink, Graham. Don't play with your Dink, Graham. Okay, uh, this is another puzzle that, as far as I'm concerned, is just clicking stuff on stuff, right? Hammer, my beloved hammer doesn't do anything. It makes no impression on the huge beast. Okay, so we're just gonna try everything in our inventory on this guy until eventually you get to the tambourine, which makes noise, and I guess that amuses Dink over here. Good day. And it looks like he dropped this thing on the ground. Graham sees the beast's hairpin lying on the stone floor of the labyrinth. We will take it. Graham reaches down and grabs the hairpin off the labyrinth floor. I like how when the narrator's talking, Graham looks super satisfied. He's got that dumbass grin on his face. Okay, so if I'm correct, we should just go down to the end of this hallway here. And there we go. Here's a door. There is a wooden door here. Perhaps it will lead into the castle. Perhaps. Graham tries to open the wooden door, but to no avail, this place is, as it's securely locked. This place is breaking Graham's poor neck, like he keeps doing the exorcist on me, it's creepy. Alright, well, let's see if we can pick yonder lock with yonder hairpin. Graham inserts the hairpin into the door's large keyhole and discovers, to his amazement, that it fits perfectly. That is pretty Turning amazing. Turning ever so gently, he soon hears a soft click, and the door is unlocked. That is awfully amazing. Alright, we're back to places that actually have detail to them. And we're gonna save again, because that's what we do. And we're also, looks like a little uh, pantry area. A set of wide steps leads up from the labyrinth door to a pantry off the wizard's kitchen. Use my exact words. 
All right, let's see what's in here. Inside the cupboard, Graham's eyes fall upon a bag of dried peas. Peas? You never know when you're gonna need peas. Reaching into the open cupboard, Graham retrieves the bag of dried peas. God damn, what is up with your head today, dude? Creeping me out. So we have peas. The bag is full of round, dried peas. So if I know anything about food in this game, this is going to be some kind of lethal weapon or trap. Much like the honey and the custard pie. So, keep that in mind. Now you might notice, well, okay, now we're in this sort of kitcheny area, and there's a lady here. Graham surveys Mordak's kitchen in disgust. It is an untidy mishmash of dirty pots, jars with unidentified contents, rags, and assorted junk. Even with all that, Graham can see nothing that interests him. I mean, I've seen worse kitchens than this, gotta be honest. So I don't know if you can hear the music here, but if you watched my uh, King's Quest VI playthrough, you, you might recognize it. Anyway, enough of the music. There's this lady here. A lovely young girl with long black hair, olive skin, and flashing green eyes laboriously scrubs the cold stone floor. Though wearing rags, her beauty nevertheless shines through. Well, we have to go uh, harass her, clearly. Don't come near me! Leave me alone! Hey... I would never hurt you. I'd like to help you. I don't believe you! You're probably one of them! Now, what do you mean by that? I'm not. Believe me. Well, you know, women in jewelry, you just dangle something shiny in front of her and her, she'll like you. That's the game's logic, anyway. Warning, this cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information yeah, okay, or Josh, we, 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 this we got it, that's good. Jewelry! Wherever did you find my gold locket? I thought it was gone for good. I lost it on the island just after I was brought here by Mordak. You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. But tell me, who are you and how did you come to be here? My name is Princess Cosima, from the Kingdom of the Green Isles. My father, the king, employed the horrible wazir who befriended Mordak. When Mordak saw me, he immediately wished to marry me and bring me here. Naturally, I refused and my father agreed with me. But our refusal angered him so much that he sold me here anyway and put me to work as a scullery girl. He says he will never let me go, that a scullery girl I will remain until I agree to marry him. But the thought revolts me. What am I to do? Don't worry, I'm here to save my family from the evil wizard. He's got them here someplace imprisoned inside a glass bottle. If I can manage to rescue them, then of course I wouldn't forget you either. I know the glass bottle you're talking about. It's in Mordak's laboratory upstairs. Keep quiet about my presence. Uh, I think this will be the most difficult part of my journey. I may not survive it. I would never give you away. And I will help you in any way I can, kind sir. So yes, all it took was some jewelry and now she trusts us completely. That's video game logic for you. So that is Princess Cosima of the Land of the Green Isles, the damsel in distress of the sixth game, which our uh, our son Prince Alexander will will chase after. If you've watched that uh, that let's play, if not, I recommend it because I made it, and that means it's good. Totally, totally, totally sound logic there, infallible, really. So let's interrogate her. By the way, who are you? I'm King Graham of Daventry. I think I know where that is. It's very far from my home, though. Don't worry. Somehow, I'll get you home again. But first, I've got to save my family. I got Yes, well, <laughs> I'll stand by you, King Graham. I'll help if I can. Thanks. I may need it. Well, I'd better get back to work. And you should keep out of sight. Aye, aye, m'lady. Ho, oh, ho, ho, ho. So, if I can, for a, a brief moment, point out more just weird shit with this game. 
we found a locket that was apparently her locket in a rock's nest in the snowy mountains. What even? How the fuck did that get there? Why is it there? Why is it her? Oh, never mind. Why am I bother? This game is... This game is a little silly, okay? There's a chicken. Graham surveys Mordak's kitchen and Okay, he has nothing interesting to say about the chicken, and that is unfortunate. That is truly, truly unfortunate. Well, let's explore around up in here a little bit. This place doesn't look fun. Well, actually, it looks like quite a bit of fun. I'd love this in my house, but eh. A hideous yet fascinating pipe organ commands attention as Graham walks through a downstairs hallway. Also, I have to say the perspective in this room is really weird. We are going to fuck with it. Graham watches in horrified fascination as the grotesque organ begins to magically play an eerie tune. Looks like he's wearing track itself. pants. Not really what I'd call a jaunty tune, but it's something. What do you want to bet this gets us killed? Those angel statues, though, I do want those in my house. My creepy house. <laughs> Okay, I've had enough of that song. A ah, nice little kitchen area here. A massive dining table has been placed before a large, ornate fireplace. That's nice. I like dining room tables. Hello. Goodbye, King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> no, 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 I said hello, and you're supposed to say hello in return. That's how this works. You know, you're... Hey, could you stop doing that, please? You're really kind of hurting my throat here. And I'm dead. And my foot's part of the table. Poor Graham. Mordak shows no mercy. Mordak has some really, really great lipstick, though. Seriously. <laughs> okay. Let's not play the organ this time around. That seems like a bad idea. So, this part of the game is largely based on chance, right? Oh, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Random things will appear and try to murder you. But in this case, we actually want to get captured by that guy. Well, this sucks. There's not even a door here. It's just like a dimensional door that appears, and that's how you get in here. Above him, Graham can see a damp, rusty grate leading to... Who knows where? Cedric, are you out there? No, useless owl. Graham finds himself in a dirty, dingy cell somewhere below Mordak's castle. Dirty, dingy cell. So we just saw a mouse go into this hole over here, and this is really critically important. No joke. Graham can see a small, moldy piece of cheese just inside the mouse hole. But we clearly need that cheese. Graham can almost reach the piece of cheese inside the mouse hole, but finds his hand too large to reach very far. If only he could extend his reach by, like, half an inch. Hello. Hello. What? Oh, Princess Cosima, where did you come from? Hell. From the labyrinth. I spend a lot of time down here, you know, with my friends. Friends? Yes. Like, Zink and Sam. I don't know if you ever saw Sam or not. Anyway, I found this loose stone once that led here, to this cell. Now come on, you'd better get out of here. Okay, but I need my cheese. Graham can't reach into the mouse hole. Okay, fuck it, use the hook. There, got it. The fish hook did the trick in retrieving the piece of cheese from the mouse hole. All right, we have ourselves a piece of cheese and a fish. We've almost got a complete meal in our pants. All right, now this time through the maze, it's a bit easier because we can just follow Cosima. We don't have to actually navigate our way through it, which is which is awesome because I hate navigating this damn maze. Make one wrong turn and you're good luck even figuring out where you are. Even if you have a map, it can be kind of trying. So yes, we now have a piece of cheese that was in a mouse hole. That cheese is critically important. It will probably end up being sharpened into a cheese knife or something we can use to fight with. I don't know. 
throw it in someone's face. That'll that'll work. So we find ourselves back in Yonda Kitchen here, and I have forgot to set a timer in this video. But in the next video, I plan to wrap up the game. So I'm going to go ahead and call this video here. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video for the exciting conclusion of King's Quest V. Whatever the absence makes the heart go yonder, that's the name of this game. I'm on point, people, as always. And as always, thank you for watching. Gucci, Gucci, Goo! Gishlu, Gishlu, Gah!